Welcome again to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's open our Bibles today from the 14th chapter of John. Now, I want to remind all of our radio and television audience, the 13th chapter. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when the Jews knew that his, Jesus knew that his hour was come, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 is all what is traditionally called the Last Supper. It's that last Passover meal that changed heaven and earth. Because right there in that meal, Jesus stepped over into the second covenant. Yes, he did. He went from old covenant to new covenant yes, he right did. there. It's a transition. And now we go over here. Being, and, being led by the law versus being led by the yes. spirit now. And if you come over here, and, it, and it's, it, it's so well done the way John recorded it. He had to get Judas out of that room. Yes, sir. He had to get that devil out of there. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you, you shall seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I go, you, can't, you cannot come. He's going to hell. Mm -hmm. They'd have no clue. But he's going there so they don't have to. That's right. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. You also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. Now, from there on, that is established. Let not your heart be troubled. Well, that'll answer a lot of questions right there. But those two things go together. Yes, they do. But now what came up in my spirit is this 21st verse. I have it bracketed in red. He that hath my commandments, we just got through saying the new commandment is love. Mm -hmm. Well, now love covers the 10. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the book says that. Yes. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Hallelujah. That is huge. Mm -hmm. Keeping the commandment is honoring God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. To honor him and obey him. So honor it is not taught in schools anymore. Well, it is in, <laughs> in what the ones like Lake Country and so <laughs> forth. Did you know the Marine Corps is the only branch of service, that, I, at least that I know anything about, that still has a class on honor? Hmm. And uh, let me touch on this. I've made mention before, I've talked to it about uh, with uh, Professor Stevens, both of us are former military. We took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So help me God. And when I said it, I'm telling you, it just seemed like to me, I was standing at attention when I did it and it just seemed like to me every hair on my head is standing up and it made me mad right then at anybody that had come against this country. But during the Gulf War, 
there were people who said, I just joined the army to get an education. I didn't join the army to go to war. That oath didn't mean a hill of beans to them. It was a lie when they held their hand up. Mm. They had no covenant with the governor, government. They I'm, lied when they said that, so help me God, so help you nothing, go school somewhere else. Like one said, get out of my foxhole. <laughs> you don't belong, you're going back to class. This is a book of sworn oaths. As far as I'm concerned, I'm still under that covenant. I am too. To defend the Constitution. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, that never went away. No. I, it never went away. No. I raised my hands, swore before God that I would do that. I tear up when I see that flag. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I fell in love with that flag when I was a little boy. Yes. Sir. And uh, I wanted to be a soldier. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I just wanted in the war. <laughs> any way I could get there mm -hmm. during World War II. And uh, I offered my dog to the Canine Corps. <laughs> now, Jitters was, <laughs> he was, he was a dandy. <laughs> he was half German Shepherd and half Scotty. There you go. He was a German Shepherd with legs about that <laughs> long. <laughs> and I took him. I, right, I had him in my arm and I handed him to the guy and he said, uh, son, he said, I know this is a fine dog. This is a fine animal, but he's a little short for military <laughs> service. <laughs> How old were you? Oh, I don't know. I was probably, I was, I was, I was already in, in school. I was seven, eight, something like that. Wow. Boy, I wanted my dog to go to war. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, somebody poisoned him. Uh -huh. And it, it tore me up so bad. And my folks got me another red Springer Spaniel. And someone poisoned him, and I haven't had a dog since. Hmm. And uh, anyway. Wow. But, uh, but here's, my, here's my point. And I hadn't thought about this before but somebody dishonored me in murdering my dogs. Mm -hmm. Because neither of those dogs were disobedient. Now, I don't know, Jitters might have whipped some dogs because, oh, man, he'd, he'd fight anything that moved. But here's my point. My desire even at that young age, was to serve my country. Yes, sir. It still is. My heavenly vision, just to put it in a nutshell, the word of the Lord came to me and said, in your teaching, faith, in your teaching, being redeemed from the curse of the law, in your teaching about what blood agreements mean, through that, you will win many more souls through the people and the pastors and the people in the field that you teach. Now, that doesn't mean we don't give invitations, we do but the biggest part of them come from the reports <laughs> mm -hmm. of the people that are in the field. Mm -hmm. And because I am sent to do certain things, they are sent to do certain things. Anyway, y let's go Yesterday go you mentioned something about Judas and mm -hmm. uh, Judas failed in honor. He had the same mentor that John had, but he, he failed in his honor of that mentor. So it's not so much about the mentor, it's about how you hear the mentor, how you men how you honor. <laughs> he, he had to be kicked out of the meeting. Yeah, he did, and you know why? We, we've done Passover on this table, you and I. And the, there's more than one time that you dip. The time that he dipped with him was dipping into the curse. When Jesus dipped into the curse, that he was gonna become the curse, the he said the bitter herbs, this is when Judas dipped in with him. And so he aligned himself with that. How'd Jesus die? How, how'd he die on a tree? 
Right. How'd Judas die? On a tree. On a tree. He dipped himself in that curse. So the point of this is covenants govern our lives whether you realize it or not. Whether you, whether you believe in it or not, <laughs> they're still governing your life. Going to honor, Jesus said some very interesting things about honor. Let me show you in Math, uh, Matthew chapter 15. Mm. And he's talking to the hypocrites. And he talks about there's a prophecy about you. In verse 8, Matthew 15, verse 8, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yes, 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 yes. And he'll say the same thing basically in Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7 and verse 6, he says, um, well, hath Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Once again, you can say all the right words, but if you're not, from your heart, if you're not operating in faith in your covenant, it's just talk. God framed this world with his words. He governs the universe with his words. We govern the planet by our words. We govern our lives by our words, but it has to be attached in faith to who I honor. My son, forget not my law. Let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Um, the classic amplifier says, long life worth living. Shall they add to you? <laughs> but you have to do it with your heart. That's what Jesus said. They're yeah. just lips, that's just lip yeah. service. Here it is, forget not my law, let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace will they add to you. That's right, that's part of the blessing yes. of your covenant. That's why I said covenant governs your lives. Now that is a covenant promise. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The entire book is. Six months after your first date, with Gloria Jean Neath, you entered a covenant with her and that covenant forever changed your life, but it also forever changed every one of our lives <laughs> yes. in here. And then six months after that, both of us accepted Jesus. That's exactly right. And then uh, the... And who knows how many tens of thousands, millions, <laughs> as a result of the decision you And made. then in January, both of us baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. Mm-hmm. I still didn't have any heavenly vision, but I had a heavenly tongue. I didn't know what right. to do with it. <laughs> right. And some people don't understand speaking in tongues because they believe what somebody taught them. Mm -hmm. They don't honor the word as much as they honor teaching of a man in that. See, your honor of the war and the fighting prepared you for your father-in-law mm -hmm. and honoring him. God will use the exact same pattern all throughout the Bible. He'll have the pattern with Noah. He'll follow with Abraham and Sarah. He'll go with Jesse's youngest shepherd son, David. <laughs> and then he'll come over to two people that are engaged to each other, Joseph and Mary. He'll follow that same pattern that you and yes. Gloria followed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Absolutely. And all of those are covenants. The first hints of these covenants were found um, in the Garden of Eden. Matter of fact, let me just show you something. I'm, I'm going to go to the book now. In page 17, the first step, of page 17 of, of uh, God, the covenant, uh, uh, and the contradiction. I'll be glad we get the real one. It's not this big. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. Well, it's out. Yeah, the text is the same size, but... Okay, the first step, page 17, the first step, in the covenant process is the calling to the covenant. God the Father takes this step by graciously inviting us to join ourselves to him. Then he in turn can join himself to us, bringing all of us, all of who he is and all of what he has into our life. This is why Paul will, will liken this to a marriage. Yes, it is a marriage. And that's when the name changes. In Nehemiah 9 tells us that God chose Abraham. God chose you. God chose you just as well. This is why I say you're part of a covenant whether you realize it or not. Now, if you're of the natural seed of Abraham, you cannot believe in God whatsoever, but you're part of the covenant. 
if you're born again, you're part of the covenant. You just may not be living in all the benefits of the covenant, but it's yours. Greg, I run, <clears throat> it became an, ex, an extreme thing to glory in me. When we found out who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. now notice how I said that. Not who I am in Jesus, but who I am in Christ, the Messiah. The one who went to hell for you. Yes. Who I am in him. In him, I can do all things. Yes. In him, in Christ, I can do all things. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, not in Jesus. In Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. Now that happened after six weeks of fasting in the wilderness. And then, I mean, John baptized him in the Jordan and in the spirit he saw the Holy Spirit land on him like a dove would land on someone. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's perfectly fine to use the dove as the, as the analogy there. But then in the wilderness, he had to be tested. That's right. When he came back, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And he began to do it. Yes, he did. Everywhere. He, he's walking now in a new boldness of, well, he's operating in faith of this, that he's received that. We received, God offered us what he offered Abraham, which takes us all the way back to the garden. He offered us the blessing. We got a lot of people trying to live in the blessing, but they don't understand how it came. And you, you said it a moment ago, by the righteousness if in Christ. In Christ. Not Jesus. Brother Hagin did a teaching in Christ, in whom, in him. Yes. Yes, sir. In the letters. So God has offered this to us. He took the first step. He loved me before I even knew he was. He was slain before the foundation of the world. He's the one who took the shame and the contradiction of sin upon himself. He's the one that gave up the ghost. He's the one that resurrected. He's the one that took his blood to the, and he offered all of it to me. Just like this, this plate of, of fruit right here. Here, that's all yours. Oh, I don't know if I, you know, I don't, eh, I don't know, Brother Copeland, I'm just not, not much into apples. Wish there wasn't apples on there. <laughs> you know, you're, that, but we do that with God. Well, I don't know. Maybe there shouldn't be healing part of this. Maybe there's that Holy Spirit part. It's not really for me. I'm, I'm not into that. No, think, we, we take the whole, the fullness. You think all that's fullness. passed away, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You sit there and look at it long enough, it'll pass away because it'll all rot yeah. right there on the plate. And you're getting no benefit from it. Yes, sir. But. All of that fruit is paid for. That was not donated to this ministry. It is paid for. Even the little weeds on top of the strawberries <laughs> belong to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm offering it to you. You can have all those green apples you want because I don't like a green one. <laughs> but I know what to do with them when I don't like them. Put a little dab of something on them. Great. That's right. <laughs> but, but we have people that have the whole, they have the whole counsel of God available to them. They have the entirety of the blessing available to them. This, because they don't understand their. You covenant. mentioned this to me. Well, This is written in red. Mm -hmm.
Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Your heavenly Father feeds the fowls of the air. Are you not much better than they? Some people don't think they are. Mm -mm. But you just keep on reading this, take no thought saying. Well, that's a clue. But then, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. righteousness. Not, not, not just seek first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The classic Amplified says right. his right way, way of doing things. Yes, sir. Righteousness is an old English word and it's turned into a religious word. Mm -hmm. But it means right standing with God. Yes. And our right standing is in him. We have no place to stand and we stand on this. Mm -hmm. So we honor him, judge not, but see you have to keep reading. Yes. Judge not that you be not judged. With the same judgment you judge, it'll be judged and with what measure you measure, it'll be measured to you again. That's seed time and harvest. Yes, it is. That's the law of sowing and reaping. Give not that which is holy to the dogs, neither cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them up. Now, let me ask you something. Would a hog know what to do with a pearl? They'll try to eat it. <laughs> And just swallow it whole with it. They swallow cans if they, you know. But this is precious, more precious than pearls. So it's what you honor. I brought that up to say this. That swine, that hog, doesn't know the difference. But we should. Mm -hmm. We know the difference between gold and dirt. Yes. And the reason we know the difference between gold and dirt is God said what gold was in the first book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> the gold was good. So now we know gold is good. Otherwise, it's just a weak metal. But why does everybody on earth now know that gold is good? They don't realize it, but they got it out of the Bible. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. But everybody knows gold is good. That's good. So, and a $20 gold piece. When that gold piece was minted, of course, they're not in circulation anymore. You could buy a suit of clothes, a pair of shoes, and a hat. Mm -hmm. Not with $20, but $20 in gold. You still can. Because mm -hmm. it's worth now somewhere around $1,800, $2,000. <laughs> Boy, you buy a pretty sassy suit of clothes and a hat if you wear one, and we're out of time again. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll be back in just Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith and the one year Bible plan every day. Keep up with culturally relevant articles and free downloads on the blog. Click through interactive issues of the BVOV magazine with links to videos and further reading. Follow along with the question of the day. Face tough questions with answers based firmly on the Bible. Get a faith boost by reading testimonies of real life success stories from people just like you. 
kcm.org meets you where you are. The reason I brought that up, everyone honors a $20 gold piece because it's 99 and 9 tenths percent pure gold. But there's one greater than all of the gold pieces on earth, and his name is Jesus. And if you don't know him as your personal Savior, accept him right now. It's the easiest and the most wonderful thing you've ever done in your life. Amen, Brother Copeland. Receiving Jesus into your heart and making him the Lord and Savior of your life is the most important decision you'll ever make. Jesus did all the hard part. He defeated and destroyed all the work of the devil. He redeemed you from the curse of the law. And with one decision to choose him, you receive every victory he won to be saved, healed, blessed, and forever free. Pray this prayer after me. Lord, I confess my sins before you. I turn my life over completely. Take over and be the Lord of my life. I receive you as my Savior. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive my new language. Father, thank you for loving me. And thank you that I'm yours. I am born again. Amen and amen. Praise God, your spirit is born again. You have the faith of God in you and you are part of God's family and heaven is your home. Life in Christ Jesus gives you the access to the Father and all he has. It's time to find out what belongs to you. And to help you understand more, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland has a free resource to send you called the Salvation Package. This will help you learn who you are in Christ and who he is in you. There's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, along with two informational brochures to help you start reading and studying your Bible. Spend time in God's word, find the promises he has for you, and build your faith. Put his word first place and make it final authority in your life and reinforce Jesus' victory in your life. Go to KCM.org and request your salvation package today free on KCM.org. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, remember this again, that God loves you and we love you and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Praise God Amen. forever. Thank you, Jesus.